Now, deadlock seems to be the most used, or perhaps that should be overused, word at the UN climate talks in the Mexican resort of Cancun. There's little sign so far of the developed and developing nations coming together to reach an agreement on how to fight climate change. And today, a new study from the humanitarian research organization, DARA, has outlined what's at stake in the decades ahead. As many as one million deaths every year could be caused as a result of climate change by 2030. Close to 80% of the entire human death toll exclusively concerns children in sub-Saharan Africa or South Asia succumbing to illnesses as a result of changes in their environment. But half of all the economic losses will be borne by industrialized nations with the United States the worst hit. Well, joining me now is the Director General of DARA and co-author of that report, Ross Mountain. Thank you very much for being here. Bearing in mind everything that you've set out there in that report, why do you think it's uh, so difficult to get politicians to really reach a conclusion and try to come together on this issue? Uh, one is struck by the fact that uh, this is the 16th conference uh, and very little to show. Um, when you look at what's around us in the climate area with what's happened in Pakistan, what's happened in Russia, um, this, we felt it was essential to focus on the human dimension of this and to focus also on a national dimension. Uh, there have been broad uh, figures thrown around, but this is not about changing commas in a conference. This is about addressing needs that are now, that are affecting people now, and will affect people much, much. Cancun and politicians everywhere else will read this evidence, they'll add it to the huge amounts of evidence they've had, the huge amounts of opinion on what's going to happen in the years ahead. And they still have to really, I suppose, be pragmatic, don't they? They have to say, say, OK, we're going to move, and that never seems to happen, despite, you know, there's a big, thick report on the desk in front of us, despite these thick reports they get. Mm. One hopes we'll go well beyond the thick report. One of the uh, aspects of this which we find rather encouraging is we're doing it in conjunction with a group of the most affected countries, um, the Climate Vulnerable Forum, which is led by, was created by uh, President Nasheed, the President of the Maldives. Um, we believe that it's... This country could disappear, of course. Indeed, indeed. And that's why we feel that it's imperative to try and get this down into human terms, the kind of figures that you have mentioned. The fact that everybody is affected, including the industrialized countries, um, there are means of addressing these problems, um, not perfect means, but if we could start dealing with some of the consequences now, um, some of the millions of lives that you've alluded to can be saved, and we can see economic consequences, but time is running out. And just looking at some of the figures that you, your studies come up with, with, as many as a million deaths every year by 2030 because of climate change, what, what sort of deaths are we talking about? Are we talking about the sort of floods we've seen in Pakistan recently? You mentioned the forest fires in Russia. Where do you see this happening? The worst of this, of the deaths, uh, first of all, of course, happen in the most vulnerable countries, in developing countries, particularly in Africa and in uh, South Asia and it's the most vulnerable people, but it's essentially health-related disasters. Uh, people suffering from malaria, from malnutrition, from uh, uh, other such diseases. Um, diseases that can be addressed pretty quickly if we're interested in saving lives. And even the adaptation money that is supposed to be available, which isn't coming yet available, can be employed much more effectively if it targets those that are at immediate risk. Now just briefly, I mean, you've mentioned there the developing countries, but in your report you also say uh, industrialized nations have a lot to fear, including the United States, uh, but all industrialized nations could be hit economically. Absolutely. One of the things that is extraordinary is that if you look back and see where we've come on AIDS, uh, about 97% of scientific opinion in, the, uh, in this climate field agree that this is a, a man-made phenomena. It is desperately important that we address it immediately and yet less worldwide than half the population understand or believe that and in countries like the United States it's about 38 percent and it's about the same I think in the UK so the population has to start understanding that it is their life and livelihoods that are at stake as well. Ross Mountain of Dara thank you very much indeed for coming. My in. pleasure thank you. Now the tiny emirate is still in